we're living in a day and in a time when uh, we feel like we have to modernize everything, including uh, the Bible and the things of, of the church. But I want to note what Jeremiah says in chapter 6, verse 16. Thus saith the Lord, Stand ye in the ways, and see, and ask for the old paths. Where is the good way? And walk therein, and ye shall find rest for your souls. But they said, We will not walk. Therein, I believe that we're seeing today um, the very same attitude. We will not walk in the old paths. Uh, we are going to uh, have a new type of music. Uh, we're going to bring a jungle beat into the church. And uh, I think that uh, there's a way to judge music, good music. Uh, if it honors, exalts the Lord, and it moves your heart before it does your feet. Uh, otherwise, it is probably fleshly and carnal. But I want us to notice what Jeremiah says, that we are to uh, take the old paths. When you come to the crossway, when you come to the crossroad, many times we come to that point where we don't know for sure which way we're going to go. We need to go, and we need to go by the way of the cross. We find that faith that we hold so dear is, by the way, not a Johnny-come-lately faith. It's one that is anchored and rooted in the Word of God. If you look in your Bible, in the book of Genesis, chapter 1 and verse 1, the Bible says, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And what we preach takes in everything from Genesis chapter 1 and verse 1 right through Revelation 22 and 21. And our God never changes, by the Bible says. In Malachi chapter 3, verse 6, he said, For I am the Lord, I change not. Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 8, Christ, uh, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday and today and forever. And so I would have to say, give me that old time religion. We have today uh, religion uh, without salvation. As a songwriter said something like this, uh, uh, that it's good for our sisters. It's good for my brother. It was good for my father. It was good for my mother. And it's good enough for me. What did the old time religion do? I believe the old time religion brought people to the house of God. When there was a gathering, there was a hunger. And there was a hunger for the things of God for the preaching of the Word of God, for instruction and in righteousness. And there was that hunger for fellowship among the people of God. So first of all, I want us to notice some things. Notice, first of all, there is a God. Now we ought to establish that. As we said in Genesis 1 and verse 1, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. The Bible says in Psalms 14 and verse 1, the fool has said in his heart, there is no God. They are corrupt. They have done abominable works. There is none that do, uh, that do of good. I believe it was R.A. Torrey, one of the great writers of a, of a generation gone by, for several generations that said that in the life of people that he had met who denied the existence of God, there was some hideous crime in their mind, that in their past, that they were trying to hide. People do not like to, to uh, accept the fact 
that there is accountability that they're going to have to answer someday to a holy God. And so uh, I want us to notice that, uh, but because God loves us and doesn't want us to miss him, he has put his signature in a thousand places. You know, the psalmist, I believe, tells us that the fool said in his heart, there is no God. But when you look up and uh, you, uh, you suddenly look up and you see the stars. Now, if I can get this story together, I want to hear it. But the Lone Ranger in Tonto was out uh, on the trail. And uh, they uh, had their tent. And uh, the Lone Ranger said, uh, what do you see when you look up? And he said, the tent. He said, uh, uh, the next night, what do you see when you look up? He said, I see the stars. He said, what does that tell you? He said, keep us on me. That tells me somebody stole our tent. And, uh, but uh, God uh, has uh, put the stars in the sky and the architect of the universe. Now, <clears throat> I want us to uh, think about something. Most of us are familiar, some of us are, when this church uh, was being built. Uh, you remember that uh, one day that we came out here and uh, there was this lot here and uh, there wasn't nothing. And then one day, all of a sudden, this building appeared. There was two befores and brick and mortar and concrete. It come together and all of a sudden, after 10 million years, we looked around and there was this structure of this building that was built. Now, if anybody believes that, we're going to sell Curtin Bridge at 2 o'clock today, be at the auction. But it did not just happen. It happened as a result and in the, that there was somebody, there was an architect that designed this building. And the men and, and this church and people got together in the early days of uh, uh, the beginning of this church and there was somebody, an architect, that designed it out, gave the, uh, the blueprint, and uh, they decided they were going to build it. They built a basement. And uh, it was flat roof, and it did not work so well, uh, like most flat roof basements do. They decided we're going to have to put a top on here to get rid of the water. And uh, it did not just happen by itself. There was somebody that caused it to come together. Well, let me say <clears throat> that this universe, when it was created, there was somebody that uh, was behind this. There was an architect. There is intelligent design. And the only way things get to be is because that there is intelligent design behind it. And so <clears throat> the Bible tells us, and the psalmist says in chapter 19 and verse 1, the heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament showeth his handiwork. And so when you stop and you think about the, uh, the earth and you look up, and uh, you see uh, the stars and all the things that uh, are in the heavenly bodies, that did not happen by accident. Uh, a cosmic explosion uh, does not uh, produce life. Uh, the life became, it came from the fact that there was a, an intelligent creator you look at the complexity of your body. You look at the intricate uh, 
and nervous system and the blood vessels and the heart and all the things that, that are working together. We did not come from a lower form of life. It just did not happen. We came, as the Bible says, God created uh, the earth. God put man on the earth. He took a rib out of man, made a woman, and things have never been right since. <laughs> no, I'm just joking, ladies. I'm just joking. I'm trying to see how many people awake today. Thank you for being awake. But uh, behind every great man stands a woman. And uh, sometimes with a pitchfork, prod him along. And sometimes we need that. But I want us to notice as uh, we study today, Sometimes you don't understand. Sometimes you don't see everything. But when you can't track God, you can always trust Him. He's still around. He's still behind the scene. The second thing I want you to note is that God wrote a book. And uh, it is called the Bible. How did God write this book? Well, the Bible says in uh, 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 16, all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. It starts out with doctrine. It's it uh, straightens me. That's reproof or correction. It helps me out. That's instruction in righteousness. God knew exactly what he was doing when he put this Bible together. It starts me out. Uh, it straightens me out. And it helps me out. How did God write a book? 2 Peter chapter 1 and verse 21 says, For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. Uh, God has plainly and clearly informed us. He wrote a book. He's not going to sit down and uh, cry if we choose uh, to believe it or not. But it wouldn't. It wouldn't take. Uh, it, it wouldn't take uh, too highly uh, <clears throat> or too lightly, for it's true. You take it to heart. You don't take the things of God uh, lightly. You believe what the Bible says. Now, <clears throat> somebody said, uh, what does the Bible say? This kid said uh, to his uh, parents one day, do you know what Bible, the word Bible stands for? What it means? Basic instructions before leaving earth. God gave some basic instructions. He told us how to get to heaven. He told us how to live while we're down here on the road to heaven. He told us how to treat our fellow man and other people. He gave us instructions to live by. Not until we could get to heaven, we go going to heaven because we trust what Jesus did on the cross as full and final payment of our sin debt before God. Every man has gone astray, is lost, and needs uh, rescue and redemption. How did God go about in rescue and redemption? Well, the Bible says, 
in Isaiah 53 and verse 6, all we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. Revelation 20 and verse 15 says, and whatsoever was and whosoever was not found uh, written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Religion as such without redemption won't save the soul. This world is full of, redeem of religion, but there's very little redemption. I think of that high church leader by the name of Nicodemus who spoke in John chapter 3 and <clears throat> he had tons of religion but not one ounce of salvation but he was honest enough to come and to seek the Lord Jesus Christ and he came one night somebody said to uh, Maybe because he did not want other people to see him there. But nevertheless, he came. And so he came to Jesus one night and he told him of the hunger and the longing in his heart. You know, <clears throat> man realizes that there's a need in his life. But man can't figure it out. That's why the Bible teaches that it pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. Jesus did not say to this hungry, hearted man, <clears throat> just live a good life, uh, pay your debts, be kind to people, carry out the, your religious obligations. Jesus said, you must be born again. Now, <clears throat> Let's just park it there a minute. Jesus did not say you must be born again and again and again. The Bible teaches that when you drink of this water that he gives, that you will never again thirst. If you trust Christ as, as Savior, you will never again seek the waters from the well of salvation. Because God, it quenches your eternal thirst. I think of Judas, who committed suicide after he betrayed Jesus. If Judas had lived during our day, wonder what kind of a funeral they would have for him. I think they would probably get up, and the preacher might say, he was a man of great influence in our city. Uh, he was uh, a very helpful individual. And uh, then the casket, uh, when the, the casket was being wheeled out toward the funeral coach, the organist would play softly, it is well with my soul, but it wasn't well with, the, with, uh, uh, with Judas' soul. They might say, asleep in Jesus. But he was far from being asleep in Jesus. We need to realize, I heard a lady one time say, her dad was not a Christian. He died lost, never trusted Christ as his Savior. And she made the statement, Daddy's not suffering now. Oh, my soul, Daddy's suffering just started. When he dies without Christ as his Savior, because he would be in the flames of a devil's hell. You know, some, most folks go out into eternity thinking that somehow God is going to uh, grade on the curve and they're going to have enough good works to pull them up to meet the standard that God has set without ever having to be born again. But Jesus said you must be born again. The Lord Jesus said this about Judas. It had been better for that man if he had, <coughs> pardon me, if he had never been born. If you die without Christ as your 
Savior. Having never been born again, it would be better for you if you had never been born. That's what Jesus said. Better never to be born than to not be born again. Now, let me just notice that he did not say you must be born again and again and again. There's some folks who, who think they have been saved, as I say, more times than a Microsoft Word document. You know, if you don't save it while you're doing it and your computer crashes, uh, you're in trouble. You'd have to, to do it over so, so you hit the save button. But God doesn't have to hit the save button again because he saved it once and for all when we trusted Christ as our Savior. And then, number four, Jesus is the only Savior for the world. Now, Franklin Graham got in trouble one time because he said that Jesus was God's only way to heaven. Well, I'm here to tell you that, that if I'd have been there, I'd have got in trouble too because Jesus is still God's only way to heaven. If we believe this book we call the Bible and we believe what it says in Acts chapter 4 and verse 12, neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. There's absolutely no hope for any man without saving faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. John was taken to the Isle of Patmos, and one of the things that he saw as he looked up into heaven was a great multitude of people praising God. And the Bible says in Revelation chapter 7, verse 14, these are they uh, which came out of great tribulation and have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. There's no other way, there's no other method of cleansing than by faith in the finished work of the Lord Jesus. The old lighthouse stood 200 feet high. The glass in the light was two inches thick. And one morning, more than 100 birds was found dead on the ground in front of the lighthouse. It seems that at night, as night came on and the fog became heavy, they had uh, flowed into the light and had been dashed to death. Let me simply say that there's a lot of people that are flying towards the light, but they're being dashed to death because they will not accept the Lord Jesus Christ as their Savior. Now, this, it's a serious matter, the matter of your salvation. Why will you die? Why will you go uh, in, on in unbelief. Why do people reject the only means of salvation and uh, reject Christ as their Savior? Let me ask you today, what are you trusting in? What are you trusting in to take to heaven? As Sonia comes to the piano and as we begin, as she begins to play, just as I am without one but that thy blood was shed for me. O Lamb of God, I come, I come. What must I do to be saved? The Bible said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. What do you believe? You believe that Jesus died. You believe he was buried. You believe he went to the tomb. He came out of the tomb. And he is alive today, sitting at the, hand, at the right hand of the Father to make intercession. And you trust what Jesus did as full and final payment of your sin debt before God. You'll give an account. Those that are listening by way of uh, the computer, by YouTube and Facebook and ever how this is being transmitted to you, I trust that you would make that decision today to trust Christ as your Savior as we stand to our feet as sun begins to play. If you know the song, sing along with it, just as I am, without one plea. But that thy 
blood was shed for me. Oh, Lamb of God, I come. I come.